All right, before we begin, I um, would just like to share a little bit about who we are and what we're doing here today. Aloha, again, we are Compassionate Ko'ala Poko, a collaborative initiative founded by partners representing the Castle, Kailua, and Kalaheo complexes of the Hawaii Department of Education, Wimmer Community College, and the Harold K.L. Castle Foundation. The Compassionate Ko'ala Poko Steering Committee began meeting during the fall of 2019 with a shared purpose of helping Ko'ala Poko become trauma-informed and better able to support youth and their families. Guided by the wisdom of our kupuna, community leaders, families, and educators, Compassionate Ko'ala Poko mission is to foster a culture of caring. In other words, we aim to cultivate a flourishing, thriving Ko'ala Poko where the youth and their families are resilient and compassionate. Oops, sorry, I'm meeting people in and you know, as I talk. Um, so that they can take care of themselves and others. And we accomplish this by ensuring our school communities are trauma-informed and responsive. This event is funded through generous support from the Noble Foundation, Education First, Rockefeller Foundation, and Not Le Aloha Foundation, all of whom we sent a heartfelt mahalo. And today we have a, actually a really special guest. And if you ever want to feel like, oh, what are you doing with your time? And apparently not enough. Um, just take some time to read um, the bio from Mahina Pashon Duart, who is our featured speaker today. Amazing OEV leader in our community. She uh, is one of the co-founders of the Vi Vi Connect Collective. If you've ever been to that spot, um, it's a, like an oasis uh, within that Omo Ilili area and um, they're growing and, and spreading in, in different ways. Um, she's also one of the founding members of Pai Pai Ohia, one of the first modern Hawaiian fish ponds that um, has a strong educational component to it and has benefited many of our keiki and um, haumana in the area. Um, she's led several charter schools, um, including Halau Kumana and Kanu Opaina. Um, she was a program manager for the um, Papahanao Mokokea Marine National Monument. Um, and the list goes on. It's just amazing. But, you know, through it all, my, you know that if you know what you know, you know that her heart is with helping others and helping the community and helping our keiki grow stronger. And especially during this time of the pandemic, helping them uh, to survive and be resilient to trauma. And so we're very fortunate to welcome Mahina Pashan Duarte and I give my aloha and mahalo, mahalo, mahalo Mahina for joining us today. Oh, mahalo ya oe, e Derek, uh, no kikona na mai ya u, and aloha to all of you, um, all of our education champions, uh, education leaders, healers, um, cultivators, uh, farmers of young people, and 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 all and everything in between. Uh, you folks are are truly um, the, the people that I consider some of the hardest working um, folks around in 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 not only Hawaii but you know um, in the U.S. as well. Um, I I'm always thrilled to be in in the presence of educators. So thank you for allowing me the time to just share share a little bit about my personal story, and hopefully we have time for conversation because that's where the real fun happens. Yeah. Um, so what I'd like to invite everyone to do first is if you could just use even though you folks have um uh I can see your names on on your tile if you wouldn't mind writing into chat um, please introduce yourself with the name that you like to be called by. And please name the Aina that you feel connected to. Name the Aina that you feel connected to. And you know, for some folks, it, you know, it, it may not come easily. So if you need a little more prompts, a little more um, guidance, and you know, uh, to respond to that question, like a favorite park, it would be really awesome if you get really specific with that with that question prompt. A favorite park, a favorite beach a favorite garden, um, somewhere out, out in nature that you, you, you feel like really strongly connected to. So let's just take maybe two minutes to do that um, or a minute and a half or so, mahalo.
as folks are um, adding their responses, I invite everyone to just take a look at, at the responses that are coming in. You can see that it, it expands um, or extends across the Pai Aina, across all of our islands. And I love that some, some folks are choosing to use ahupua names that are lesser known, um, ili aina names that might be lesser known. Appreciate it as well if you, you feel inclined to, to say why you feel connected to these, to the particular aina that you spoke of. And appreciate also folks that are sharing um, they're just uh, kind of like sharing briefly that while particular aina has has evolved and changed for whatever reasons that um, your your memories and your connections remain strongly intact. Okay, thanks everyone. Thank you for doing that. Um, the reason why I had asked folks to, and please, if you if you um, are still adding or contributing to the chat, please go ahead. The reason why I asked uh, for us to to kind of open up the conversation and to open up my my short sharing with you around Aina is because I wanna I wanna share a little bit about um, my walk through trauma um, and resilience in my 20s and, and my 30s and, and now into my, my mid 40s. So imagine this, imagine this. Um, I am a, I'm a junior in high school and everything that's been fed to me, you know, from um, my upbringing, I'm, I'm, a native Hawaiian woman. I'm also of Portuguese descent. I'm also third generation Filipina um, and, and, and other ethnicities. I would say, however, uh, that alongside my native Hawaiian um, ties uh, and lineage, my, my Filipina, my Filipino heritage had a strong, strong bearing on how I saw the world as a young, young teenager. And I grew up from very early on um, being taught um, that, you know, your responsibility is really to get good grades, right? You go to school, you get good grades, you get good grades so that you can get, a, get into, uh, get earn, you know, good scholarships. You get good scholarships and attend good schools so that you can make a lot of money and you can accumulate material wealth and that you can elevate your stature in, in society by being, here are your choices, you can be a dentist, you can be a lawyer, you can be an accountant. Those are your choices. For some reason, they didn't, they didn't say, no, you, you should be a nurse or, you know, medical, you know, be in the medical profession. I don't know. Maybe they didn't think I had the worth, wherewithal. However, uh, they were very clear. You can be a, a, you know, you can be those three things that I described earlier. And, um, you know, early on, I noticed, you know, elementary, middle school, elementary and middle school, I had I noticed in myself, like, what does this mean? Because when I go to my dad's side of the family, who happened to be um, Kanaka, Kanaka Maori, uh, I didn't, I didn't have any role models that were in those professions, and I didn't see anyone that looked like me. Although I was able, I attended, um, I attended a, a, a small little independent school that were based, that was basically a feeder school into, um, you know. Um, Iolani and, and Punoho and, and Kamehameha and all of those things. But when, when I was, I was being fed all of this, you know, all, uh, fed and, and told, here is your, here's your direction. And this is your mark for success. When I looked around my own family, when I would go home on weekends to uh, the Hawaiian side of the family, um, I didn't see anyone that were in those professions. I didn't have any role models. And in fact, 
I was getting another set of messages. The messages at this time, right, in the 80s was, um, better you, you, you know, you make sure you take Japanese if when you go to attend Kuma schools, because by learning Japanese, you will likely be able to, you know, get a good job in a tourism sector. And, and you know, that's a good life. And make sure you take Japanese, not Hawaiian. And so what I guess what I what I'm just trying to illustrate here is that as a as a young person and granted it's, it's a different time you know in the 80s I was I I got all these mixed messages right I got all these mixed messages and I didn't know how to reconcile reconcile that what I felt like was conflicting messages and competing messages um and it wasn't until high school right and I go now into to high school and I would say middle school and high school in my early high school years, um, I, I, you know, all of the messages that I was receiving from the institution in which I belong to kind of reinforced this idea that su success belongs outside, you know, success comes from outside of Hawaii. Success means you leave Hawaii and you receive, you know, a great education because great education is beyond the shores of Hawaii, if you're lucky, right? And, and at that time, the messages that were being fed to me by, I, I would hate to say, but my counselors at the time, my college counselors at the time, was that, you know, again, it, it, this is irony, like you need to go away. However, when I look at, look at what you're producing, you can only go to community college. So they're saying that you need to set up for um, a, a traje trajectory of success that will lead you away. And yet, when they saw me from the eyes of my report card, and you know, maybe it wasn't stellar, it wasn't stellar, I think I would get, you know, 3.0 out, 3 point average. They, they would tell me I was not good enough and that I should stay stay at the community college level. And by the way, I love community colleges. I actually did attend a community college um, afterwards. Don't worry, this is not gonna be a bummer message for the rest of this, okay? We're gonna quickly get through all of that. Um, so what I wanna tell you folks is I was really fortunate enough to um, you know, be really, um, spend a lot of time in extracurricular activities. Um, that's where I was able to create community in my high school. Um, and I had some really great mentors um, that had, uh, who, who saw something, right? They saw that I was struggling. They saw that I was, I lacked some kind of focus or purpose. And they invited me to go and um, they invited me to try out um, for this Hawaii delegation in which we, um, as a high school group, we were invited, our school was invited to participate in the Pacific Island Arts Festival, which is kind of like the, the Olympics of Pacific Islander cultural festivals. And I had an opportunity to try out. I'm glad I, I, I'm glad I, I, I worked up the courage to try out. And here's the reason why. Um, in 1992, um, we were able to travel. We lived away for like six weeks and we were able to represent Hawaii and native Hawaiian culture and language. Um, and it was the first time that I actually saw and was able to participate, um, one, at, to represent Kali, number two, to see, you know, authentic representation of Pacific Islander cultures that were celebrated, that were fully acknowledged and fully seen for all of its, you know, for all of its intellect and for all of its, um, you know, uh, artistic value and progress. Um, and, and by witnessing others, acknowledging and seeing one another as whole, beings as whole individuals that were regarded as like 
iconic figures and, and, and champions and, and celebrated leaders. For the first time, I think I felt like I belonged as a Native person. First time I felt like I have nothing to be ashamed of. That I too, I too can be a part of, of uh, a community that is recognized, that is seen as as whole peoples. Um, it, it, and and I, just to kind of underscore this, I think what really brought it home was, you know, I was a junior in high school, and part of our task there was not only to perform the the, the the dances and to speak the language of our people and to uh, support the, the esteemed elders and kupuna master artists, artisans that were there. Our, uh, in addition, our task was to, was to welcome Hokulea, our mama canoe, onto the shores of, of, of Rarotonga. It was the first time that uh, Hokulea made her, made her way back to the shores of Rarotonga for over, I would say, 500, 600 years. In fact, the name of that particular voyage was called Nonamamo, for the generations, for the many generations. And it was in that very, very moment when I, when I saw Nainoa coming off the canoe and all of the other um, captains and navigators Bruce Blankenfeld and, and many others, uh, Chad Kalefa Babayan, who has since passed, and many other um, you know, cultural leaders come off the canoe then and, and, and come off the shores and, and an entire Pacific peoples represented from not only Polynesia, but also Micronesia and Melanesia. We as Mwananuya Kia, as an entire body of Pacific peoples, crying and rejoicing because we knew, I believe, we knew without, you know, in, inherently and in, our, in the spirit of that moment, what that represented, right? It was, it was a representation of a canoe of a vessel of a people that was at the brink of full genocide that could have gone to a language that to, to, could have gone totally extinct to now a, a, a deep, not only Kanaka Maoli can reclaim its, its place in the world, but also helping everyone to remember that yes, in fact, we are all connected. We are all part of this, you know, of humanity, right? And I, so I, I thank, I, I, I just thank those teachers that saw like this kid, this kid, she, she, she looks, there's something there so she looks like she, she could benefit from a little bit of extra encouragement. She looks like she could benefit from, you know, uh, being placed with a challenge, you know, a, a challenge that, that she could take on. And I know who those teachers are. And if it were not for them, just taking an extra moment, I have, you know, one of the teachers hand wrote me um, a message to, and, and gave me the application to go sign, you know, to do that. And then another teacher had checked in with me. And if it were not for them, for that, just noticing, noticing of potential, um, I would not, I would not be where I am today in terms of Choosing to um, acquire, to choosing to acquire knowledge and experience and skills 
to care for to care for uh, Native Hawaiian practice, to care for um, uh, Native Hawaiian education, approaches to education, not only to benefit Kanaka Maoli, but to, to benefit the collective whole. For all peoples who care, who love uh, and call this place home, that is my purpose. That's my purpose. And so that's, a, that's in whole what I wanted to, to share with you folks. I mean, I could I could go into you know more in depth with with like the struggle that I, I I've had. I, I can go into to that, but it's not it's not absolutely necessary. I do have a couple of pictures that I, I wanted to share with you folks, if you don't mind. And then um, what I'd like to do is I like to ask Derek. I'm gonna just share screen real quick. Yeah, actually, I will share a screen because I'm going to actually tie my chapter of my 20, my uh, my teens and my 20s into 20s and 30s now. So I'll do that. Okay. Here we go. Okay. Can you guys see that? I'm going to put it in present mode. Hold on. Oh God, this is not going. Okay. Okay, so here's the next chapter. So I went to Rarotonga, my life changed. And instead of being, um, you know, like hell bent on getting the grades so that I could get into a good college so I could accumulate uh, material wealth, my my folk, I, I had purpose. So when I came back from Rarotonga as a junior, I, I then had purpose. I wouldn't say it was a defined purpose, but I knew this. There's a lot of things I didn't know, but I did know this. I knew I wanted to stay home to pursue my, my educational uh, aspirations. And here's the reason why. The reason why I felt like I needed to do that was because I didn't, when I asked myself like, who am I? Who am I? And what is my place in the world? I didn't feel like I knew enough about my own native heritage to be able to like, I, I didn't feel like I had the right even, this is my own perspective, the right to, to go to someone else's place if I didn't even know how to take care of my own place. So that's the reason why I, I decided to pursue an education here at home. I went to the University of Hawaii at Hilo, um, but I ended up transferring and finishing my undergraduate study at Manoa. And, um, and basically what I wanna share is, um, you know, I started volunteering early on um, as a 19 year old at um, Heia Fish Pond. Um, and, uh, and there's a story behind that. We don't have time really for that part, but uh, just know this, that I, I transferred over um, and started to attend uh, UH Manoa. Um, I was really missing my lifestyle in, at, at UH Hilo because um, I will say this, when I started attending University of Hawaii at Hilo, I wanted to make sure that I had a comprehensive, uh, comprehend, I, I, that I would undertake and, and undergo a an comprehensive approach to learning. So I made sure I structured my, uh, my college um, schedule, all my classes for Tuesday and Thursday classes. Therefore, I could do all my outside learning in Waipio, in Kohala, in Puna, from Thursday afternoon after my last class all the way to like Monday evening. And so, literally, I was studying at, you know, in 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 the Lo'i fields with Kupuna in Waipio. I was building a canoe called Makali'i, who's a sister canoe to um, Hokulea, with my uncles out in Waimea. I was learning about uh, water systems out in, in Kohala and so forth and so forth and so forth. And so when I when I came home to, to Oahu and it was like longing to be outside, I basically found myself um, uh, in this opportunity to go and, and volunteer at Heia Fish Pond. I go to Heia Fish Pond, I catch the bus 
Okay, I catch the bus, I get off, I walk to Ipuka Street, and I'm sure many of you have been to Heia by now, right? Down to the Lokoia. You know, on the top of the drive, okay, I'm walking down the top of the drive, going down, down the descent of the drive. It looks nothing like what it looks like today, nothing at all. So if you can imagine where the bridge is, right? For those, who, um, the bridge is uh, between Kako'o Uibi and Heia, where there's the, there's still the thick, dense mangrove forest. It's quickly coming down, right? We're in the final stretch. That entire, the, the, the thickness of that uh, mangrove remaining uh, mangrove forest went entirely up around full circle of the 1.3 mile uh, long wall. So basically I was brought down, I was escorted down, down this pathway, I didn't know where I was going. And then um, the caretaker of the time took me and said, come follow me, I go. And we said very few words in between. I didn't even know really who this person was. And she takes me, I would say, three quarter mile out uh, of the wall. So where um, the fish pond wall was closed for that, you know, historic event. I like to say historic event um, in 2016, Panikapuka. She stops there. And at the time, it was still a huge gaping, gaping puka, right? From the 1965 Keopuka flood. I stop there, I turn, I close my eyes, I turn and I look towards uh, the watershed area towards Ioleka. And I close my eyes and immediately, immediately, I feel this warmth of air come across me. And I, I, I just like smell this like, I don't know, like, like dirt being kicked up and, and the smell of mud. So when you, you've worked in, in fish ponds and, and lo'i and you've taken your students there, or you had, you know, um, professional development uh, workshops, you know, like when there's lots of people that are in a lo'i or in the local e, um, you stir up the, you know, lots of smells, right? From the aina, right? And so that's what I was smelling. And then I just heard my, again, my eyes were so closed and I heard like, thousands and thousands and thousands of voices and I heard the voices of laughter children laughing I heard people you know uh, calling out you know is obvious instruction and I just I had a sense that there was community there was community that was present with this particular Aina and I knew very little about fish ponds at the time and I knew very little about myself, but I did know this. I knew that because of all of my, my kind of like my built up trauma that's been inherited and um, acquired, I knew I, I knew I had some healing to do. I knew that I was suffering. I knew that there was a lot of pain, emotional pain that I was experiencing. And, and so this is the pictures uh, in front of you is like, you know, it's just basically a wondering, you know, if, if we, 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 if we think there's some truth in this idea that we are a reflection of our Aina, I wonder what that means when we see, you know, the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands being, you know, continue to be polluted by our misuse, right? When, when we see, um, you know, harmful, harmful, destructive practices that are, that are literally poisoning us, right? When, when we have the whole Red Hill situation, like literally. So, if all I have control over really is my own decisions, then, then how, how do I show up? How do I show up if, if I'm hurting? How do I show up and bring my best self so that I can, I can activate community, I can serve community, I can lift up community when I am still dealing with you know, my own kind of trauma? So those are some, some kind of things that I was thinking about in my, my early 20s. And then I had 
this crazy idea alongside of my, my best friends. And while we were attending college, um, we had this crazy idea because we were, you know, I started volunteering, I mentioned to you when I was 19, right? Had this pretty uh, visceral vision. I knew that that was the vision in my mind. I could, I could feel, I could feel the vision. I could feel it. And um, so we had this crazy idea. Well, let's just start, let's just start calling all of our friends and just invite all of our friends from all of our classes to start doing community work days. Okay, let's do that. So we we do that, and then it you know more people would come, and then somehow we were convincing enough to convince our our professors like, hey, you should bring your classes down here too, and maybe you can give us credit for our scholarships. <laughs> um, and 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 so it just kind of snowballed, right? And then I was. Um, I also had the opportunity to intern at uh, Kikula Kamako um, when the, in, in 19, what was it, 1999, 2000, in 2000, um, when they first started. Uh, this is a, they were a lab school under UH Hilo. That was my first entree into a uh, formal education. And, and here's what we saw it like quickly, quickly. I mean, we were just like grassroots kids that were just like well we're falling in love with this place so if we feel like we're falling in love with this place then maybe others will want to fall in love with this place too and let's just invite anyone and everyone um and, and let's just see you know what this all means again this is like i don't know this is literally like 2000 to 2005 so pretty early on there is no term aina based education at the time right um and we, we, it was just very simple. We felt like as young kids, we were we were kind of experiencing healing for ourselves as we were helping to restore Aina. We felt like we were we were restoring ourselves. Right? You've heard this story. Um, this is this is a. This is now becoming our collective story, right? And this just this idea, like when when we when we heal, when we make time to heal, then perhaps we can extend opportunities for for all of us to heal. And uh, again, this idea, like when we collectively heal, um, when Aina is seen and cared for as a part of our ohana. When it's it does it's not regarded as just property. When it's not just regarded as as um, as an investment, financial investment. When it's not just regarded just as a commodity commodity. When it's seen as you know as something sacred, as something important, as something integral. You know, I wonder. I what I just wonder. I don't. I'm. I don't have answers here. I just, I just have a, a small story. Um, I just wonder what's possible. We do have some small signals that um, Aina-based education and 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 Aina-based thinking, right, is is the kind of thinking that the world is looking for. We know that we have not done as as in general as humanity, we've done more destruction to our earth, to our island earth over the past 200 years than any other right time. And yet we have all the technology. We are a learned, you know, we're, we're very learned. We're very connected. And I, I just can't help to think like, if, you know, if perhaps if we, we thought about, uh, you know, our, our, our norms, the destructive norms and the generative norms, and, and, and we think about, well, what then creates our norms and it's, it's values that creates our norms, well, then what then informs our values? And again, there's no, there's no easy, there's no easy solution to this, right? 
so what I offer is that, you know, when I had the um, honor of uh, co-founding Paipao Hei as its first executive director, and we just celebrated 20 years. And thank you to all of you who continue to support um, all of our Ko'olau Aina-based organizations and, and Aina-based organizations throughout the Pai Aina. You know, we started off, and I think when we started off and founded our, our org in 2001, I think there are only, I wanna, I wanna say about eight, eight fish pond organizations or less, six to eight. Um, and then we had the pleasure of helping to like create a Kui Malamalo Kui a network. So now there's well over 60 um, uh, uh, fish pond oriented organizations and hui, uh, limu networks and marine based networks. And, and it's not because I'm not saying it's because of us. However, what I am saying is that we, when we create um, opportunities where we can find our own purpose, you know, to uplift, to heal, to transform, and we create collective vision. That's that's the Hawaii that I I strive to be a part of. So yeah, in closing, in my part at least, is uh, what will our collective abundance and resilience resilience look like? What will our collective abundance and resilience look like? And I offer this question to you folks because like I maybe you know when I when I when I reflect on on you know the kind of questions that I had lingering around lingering around my mind as a young person you know we have all of these internal and external factors that are like feeding a person's mindset right and heart set so I wonder what what you folks can do and I I want to I want to be in service to all of you you guys are the front line, you know, of, of shaping and cultivating the next generation. So what, what are those questions um, that, that we're trying to, that we would, we think are powerful questions um, that our, our, our youth can, can own and adopt and adapt for themselves to help be a guidepost, you know, for, for them. Um, I'm yeah, and uh, Derek, would you mind sharing the the video now, and then we can close with conversation. In a alakai, e olu ole akoko mai maanei. Ala alakai, if you're going to alakai, a group of fifty, please come over here. Pretty much, we we'll try send out people by two hundred at a time. So like, we'll meet on first floor, alakai, second floor, and then we'll go down. <laughs> Thank you for coming to Kwanikapuka. Thank you for being part of this very historic and momentous event. We anticipate about 2,000 people that will be lining our kuapa and helping us to solidify the strength of our kuapa. So thank you again for being here from the Keiki all the way to Kupuna. Mahalo, mahalo, mahalo. This is um, something of great magnitude. It hasn't happened for over 200 years, and it's a really important time for us to take pause and to remember and be reminded of the genius of our ancestors. It is because of them and their legacy that we have a blueprint uh, to live more sustainably. We've never had more than 400 people on site. I'm excited to see people from all different circles, you know, Ohana, people that have been coming here for 15 years since we've been around, people that are brand new, people that are malihini. The nation of Hawaii is built upon basically this aina and inclusive of all people. I'm excited to see that. Don't really know how it's gonna actually go until it goes. If you guys all saw the five gallon buckets that were inside, they were half full with coral. Those are the buckets that are gonna be passed out. So at the end where the puka is, 
They built two walls on the side. There's a bridge going over it. So all the coral is going into the two sides. You know when your kupuna call you to action for whatever reason, you just do it. And we're sort of freaking out about today, but we know that it's going to be good and it's going to end with a fish pond that is makaukau to receive fish. We want to be able to provide food for this community. I really think this fish pond can do that. It's going to benefit so many people and future generations too. So our work today, it's only going to benefit for the future and that's the main thing. We come from up Mauka and Yolekaa, so our water meets this fish pond. It's a inherent kuleana for us to keep this relationship from Mauka to Makai going. Came out here to give back, give back to the Aina. We were taught that this fish pond was here over 800 years ago. The United States of America is not even close to being that age, and so there's a lot of history. For some of the kids, they're Hawaiian, for some of them not, but all of them have an opportunity to give back and be a part of the community. It's beyond words. You can bring people from all over the islands. We just met a couple from Waimea on the big island. That's what Malama Aina and Malama Honu is all about bringing people together, no matter where we're from. Ua hiki mai au me ke kai o ka umau hau mana hula. Mi hiki ke ho iki yalako ka hane i hane ia maka waka hiko. Lavi mai yalako. Ko a o vau ma o ka hula e kako o yalako e ike i ka hana o ka poe hawa i ka waka hiko. I hiki ho o mau mana o hana o ki yao. Oh, ki hiki mai neka. <laughs> what today stands for is the power of the Hawaiian spirit, the power of Hawaiians being in charge of their own destiny and their places, places that feed them and have fed us for years. And the way that that's been done is a kako effort. Lau lima, many hands, we got to return this kind of practice to normalcy. And what it did is it pointed out that we need a lot more practice. <laughs> Hopefully later we get better and better. But we try for push, at least we got the gate out. So. In this 50 years ago, never have one connected from this. Now at least you can say 50 years worth, we finally connected them in our time. I'm overwhelmed because I don't know what the future holds for this fish pond. I have high hopes but I know it's gonna be something awesome. Yeah, mahalo, mahalo everyone. Um, feel free to, to just un unmute if you have um, wonders or questions or comments. Let's just, just have open conversation. Mahalo, Cynthia, you were there. Awesome. <laughs> that was quite an event, yeah. Artists, can I call you out? What are you thinking? Any response, any wonders, any, I don't know. 
called was, collective action. <laughs> I was really wondering what your thoughts were on like next steps. Like you can see so much progress in, especially on our side. I'm less familiar with other parts, Shah, and even our side. I'm not completely. But um, what do you see as our next call? What what's your next call to action? What you planning? Hmm. What's my next call to action? Well, you know, I one of the things that I've been working on um, with some some friends of mine is called I know Aloha Economic Features. So I'll go check out the link. Um, I mean, I'll, I'll grab the link and put it into to chat. And I just want to encourage you folks if you if you haven't heard about it, it's it's really you know we're we're trying to um, shift the thinking uh, from you know extractive um types of practice and 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 decision making to one that's more generative and and we we offer our thoughts in a in a pretty comprehensive way and it's not only our thoughts we just it was basically just give you the synopsis um when uh governor Ige had announced after the first shutdown that he was going to um you know uh, um establish um you know a means and 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 assigned um, a person to be our economic navigator who's going to help um, lead us through out, out of out of the our current economic disruption. My uh, colleagues and I, when we when we kind of looked at who he had um, brought onto his team, we were just asking, well, where are the teachers? Where are the the the, the health practitioners? Where are the kupuna? Where are the youth? Where are the farmers that are represented? Um, you know, where's the regular working class people? that are represented and we felt like, you know, without representation, we felt like the plan that might be developed would be lacking. Um, and so, yeah, I guess that's one, one way. Um, we've we've kind of called to action um, some key policy priorities. Um, I think, you know, top of mind, I think for all of us is the, the, the state of, of, of our water resources. We are an island community. We are an island-based economy. This is not new. We know this. And so um, we need to, I think we need to collectively come together. I mean, part of the, I you know, you, you could tell me more artists, but we have well-intentioned individuals, right? Representing the state, state agencies and, and, and county level departments. And then we have, you know, um, you know, some really value line companies and nonprofits and so forth. But I don't feel like there's a lot of confluence between the different state level plans, county level plans, grassroots community plans. And so like, like what are what are the what are our priorities? And what are the what's the infrastructure needed? Well, how do we make how do we actually create shared priorities and a common agenda? that we can all agree upon that our leadership should support. So I don't wanna to get too political, but I think it's pretty basic stuff. Like how do we set a collective agenda that we all can agree on? Um, and, then, and then who's gonna take care of what? And then how do we all contribute? And, and then how do we all you know, responsibly um, uh, measure um, you know, our contributions? Uh, to something that a, a vision that's more collective and shared and then prioritizes the health and well being and resilience of our Aina and our people. And I know I it can that. seem a little Pollyanna ish, but isn't it true? Don't we need a plan? <laughs> yeah. And I, I just, I love, you know, instead of like looking at it like a pie and this is my little piece, like this is our pie, like that water, that's not just the military's water or this region's water that's so that's our water that's all of our water supply yeah yeah i don't know how you get there mahina but i'm sure you're going to figure it out you'll, oh no you'll... we will all and the great thing is that we all get to work with youth right from either k-12 or post-secondary so we get to create the conditions for which you know the next generation of, of problem solvers will will be at the fore but i think the difference here is that it seems like you one of the one of the things that I really appreciate about your what what I've learned about your group from from Derek is that you folks are connected through a common value set, right? And instead of and it sounds like you're you're building a community of practice. So I 
that's that's what we need. We have really smart individuals. We have talented individuals. But what about that connective tissue? So I would just encourage yeah. you folks to do more of what you're doing and, and to spread it you know, within different sectors as well. Can I chime in? Please. So I'm Nancy and I'm on Kauai and I'm at Kapa'a High School and I do the parent um, community component. So it's called PCMC. So I don't know if you're familiar with that, but I basically keep the parents informed of what's happening in the schools. And so when you're asking that question for me, keeping that connection going. And so like I do a newsletter and I do uh, people in the community send information to me and I disperse that to our greater community, which is our, our, our families, which are, you know, teachers, doctors, I mean, it could, I mean, whatever our parents are, it, it, and so it's extensive how we can um, reach our community. So like I get information from WIPA Foundation, and so they do this cleanup, and I don't know if you're familiar with Hawaii, and so they do this, and they send that to me every month, and I send that out to people, and then there's a, our Lidgate Park, which, and then if everybody comes and cleans out this pond for KP and the playground, and, and so it's a big thing. So, um, and then just, sorry, and then when you're asking about how we're feeling, I was thinking like when I went, when the, and see if I can pronounce this right, I, I'm Hispanic, but anyways, the, when the Haukulea came here, and, and, and so that information came to us through the schools, and then we dispersed that out. So, um, me and my son went, and, and for me, it just seemed, that the culture where you know we all have our different cultures but to see that and 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 then how each boat came in and as we re they received them they had a gift because that was such a Hawaiian tradition right and the exchange of gifts and all that and they, it, it's just so beautiful but it like you said you, you need to keep doing those things and sharing that and making the connection with the school so that they can keep dispersing that information to their all their families and, and keep that connection going. And I, I can't stress that enough because when I see these beautiful things happening and that we're giving our families an opportunity to know about them, you have such a great audience with your schools and making that connection with someone at the school level or district or whatever. But for me, it'd be me at the at school level and letting our families know you can be part of this. You can come volunteer. You can you know put your hands into the cleaning up of whatever organization reaches out to us. So that's just what I want to share. Yeah, thank you so much. And yeah, Waipa, they're definitely leaders in, in Aina-based education and Aina-based management. And I guess um, what you bring to mind, I know that we're, our time is up already, but what you bring to mind is, is this, like one of the, one, one of the benefits for um, providing increased access to Aina-based learning opportunities um, for all of our students, for all of our learners, and and you know even even for you know our adults, right? Um, is some you know, it, it's one thing to read off some value statements, you know it's one thing to read read values on a on a poster um, or on a declaration. It's another thing to experience it, to practice it, to be a part of living values, living values. And, and you guys know this. I mean, this is why you, you, you're having this forum now. You're, you're, it's not just about, it's not just an intellectual exercise. It's really about um, applying, right? It's applying, it's extending the knowledge it's, um, and, and making the, the, the knowledge stick and, and making it um, a part of you. So yeah, I mean, when we're talking about, you know, how do we reduce our, our overall impact um, to our environment um, while we face, you know, um, in the face of climate change, I mean, these, I, I, I personally believe that it's, um, we're so lucky that we live in Hawaii that really there is no excuse. There is an, a, a community workday opportunity in, in, all the major districts on every island, right? So we have we have the, the ability to practice what we value, what we aspire to. And I think it's really critical. I don't think it's just something nice to do. I think it's critical because if not, 
If not, then we will continue towards a path that is destructive, right? Then we forget how to, then we forget how to, um, how to, um, how to share leadership, how to share power, how to share in Kuleana, um, and, and, and all those things that Aina teaches us. But I will turn the time back to you, Derek. Thank you so much for allowing me the, the opportunity. And again, I just want to uplift and, and celebrate all of you um, for doing the transformative work that you do. Um, know that, you know, the, there's so, there's like little things that we can do to really speak into the lives of, of, um, of the people that we care about, and particularly our youth. Um, and just want to encourage you all to find some respite, find some rest, find um, those aina that, that um, brings lots of um, sense of uh, regeneration uh, to you so that you can feel filled up for the next, for the new year. And thank you again so much. Aloha to each of you. Mahalo, <clears throat> mahalo uh, Mahina, mahalo Piha for sharing your story and being an inspiration to all of us. You know, um, it just your coming together and how the um, efforts at Pai Pai Ohi uh, really was something organic. You know, it started off with your friends and, and, and growing into a community-wide effort and um, being able to heal um, that Aina, being able to heal the people who, who now actively work there and contribute to there and, and can see, you know, um, the fruits of their efforts come to life. So really want to thank you for sharing all of that and sharing that story and getting us to, to think more deeply about what might be the next steps for us and, and how we can move forward in broadening um, that healing effort for, for more youth and, and more of the people in our community. So thank you again and thank you all for coming today. We really appreciate uh, you joining us. A recording of this talk will be made available on our YouTube channel. Uh, but until um, the next time, and maybe the next time might be our work day at Ho'oku Aina. Um, go check it out. It's this Saturday. We do have a link to sign up on our website, compassionatekoolafoko.org. Um, and we encourage, you know, if, if you want to get your, your hands in the Aina, um, it's healing just to be able to do that and, and begin the process of forming or re-establishing a relationship with the Aina. Um, through there. So again, thank you all for coming out. We look forward to seeing you at our next event. Mahalo again, Mahina. Really appreciate it. Aloha Nui. Aloha Summer. Aloha.